Dear Emma, it's 5.13 in the morning, and this is all your fault. I'm at the top of the Orpheus Street now, waiting for a bus in the freezing cold, and all the stars look bleached out in the dead black sky. Ugh, and this is the worst idea I've ever had. I did see an opossum this morning. That was awesome, and mildly terrifying. Have you ever seen one of those? Uh, be thankful if you haven't. They, they have these tails, these long, weird tails. Not enough attention has been focused on the possum as nightmare fuel potential. Believe me, that potential exists. Sorry, I have a tangent problem, and you know that. So, anyways, this is your fault. You're the one who kept telling me to read more creepy pasta. Grow a pair, Stuart, you'd say. It's just a scary story on the internet. That's all. Read it. It's not going to kill you. Well, today is the day I find out. Last night, I was alone and bored and trying to scare myself. My dad's out of town at some convention in Las Vegas. I, I know I didn't tell you. I'm sorry. I couldn't. You know him. <laughs> You'd try to make me have a party, and that's the last thing I wanted. You know me. I hate everybody. I keep having horrible thoughts of my father engaging in embarrassingly sordid and pedestrian Las Vegas behavior with all those other middle-aged conventioneers. I see them as a drunk, bald, self-perpetuating conga line, barrel disasters away from their homes and flailing at girls half their age. I thought after my mom died, I would have had a better relationship with my dad, but all he does now is work, and it's like he's terrified to have a conversation with me. I understand I'm his devastatingly witty, charming, and well-dressed son. I'd be intimidated of me too, but how charming can I be, you ask, if I stay in on Friday nights reading creepypasta alone? Still charming, girl. Still quite appealing. This infuriating tangent will be the death of me. Anyways, I read a ritual pasta last night called Cafe de Poet. And have you read it? Uh, it takes forever to get creepy and winds up being more sad than anything else, but I liked it. After I finished reading it alone in my bed, my room lit up by my laptop, I thought, well, why not? What would happen if I followed the pasta directions? Has anybody ever done that? What do I have to lose, Em? So, that's why I'm here, waiting for a bus. This pasta said it would appear after I wait for 20 minutes. It's been 15 and I haven't seen a thing. The letter I'm writing you, by the way, is a part of the pasta. I'm supposed to stop and write a letter four times during this to my torn true love. Hope you're okay with being my true love. I don't think Kajiao is even aware of me, although he's very straight. So tragically predicting, so mundanely straight. Slings and arrows we live through in this life, girl. I don't see a bus anywhere. This isn't even a bus line. I'm beginning to think this pasta, spoiler, might not be true. There's supposed to be a dude waiting for me on the corner, too. I'm not supposed to talk to him or look at him since he's not here. That currently isn't an issue, which is good. This corner is actually pretty creepy. The street lights are broken, kind of flickering. There's this fog everywhere, and it's frigid. Much colder than I thought it would be. I'm not wearing the right kind of clothes for this. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, holy fuck. Someone, some, someone's walking up to the corner. Holy fuck, they're standing right next to me. Oh, fuck. Uh, I wasn't prepared for this, not at all. Uh, they're saying, they aren't saying anything. My hands are shaking, it's hard to write, I can't see my breath, but I can't see theirs. Um, I can't see any breath. There are lights coming from up on the dead end of the street. It's it's a bus. Jesus fucking Christ, it's a bus. It's got black windows. The door just opened. I'm going in. 